back, everybody. Folks, my next guest is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and today he's releasing his first solo album in over a decade. Please welcome David Byrne. Hey, nice to see you again. Good to be back. As you know, I'm a big fan. It's always, you know, nice to hear David Byrne. I love your music. Don't get to talk to you as much as I'd like. Um, and I'm really excited about the new album, uh, This Way. American Utopia. First solo album in 10 years. Uh, what you been doing with yourself for 10 years? Oh, I, I did a couple of musicals. I did uh, one about Imelda Marcos. Um, that's uh, a sort of a dictatorial uh, family ruling a country. Yes. Um, is there anybody in the Trump administration that you go like, I'd like to write a musical about that person? Oh, I was thinking about this earlier. Um, I was thinking about Jared Kushner. <laughs> so, uh, very unlikely. A Jared musical? Well, I was just thinking, if I had to write from his point of view, because that's you have to write from his point of view sure. and get the audience to buy into right. what he's feeling. And obviously, he has the face of stone. There's, you don't see any. Yeah, just, feelings, a, just, just a mask, a mask stare, of indifference. Yeah, stare, and you go, but something's going on in there. And I think it's, it, his thing is, uh, I don't want, I can't let what happened to my daddy happen to me. <laughs> and Which is that he was... Went to jail. Went to jail. Daddy went to jail. Went to jail right. For doing some bad things. Right. And Jared, it's like a Greek tragedy. Everything that Jared does takes him closer to what, what happened to Daddy. And it's like he <laughs> can't stop it. It's and almost like yeah. everything I do, it's like this magnet pulling me into my fate, my ordained, you know, like a Greek tragedy. The fates are going, you are going to relive your father's sins. Wow. You know, that kind of thing. So he's got this terrible, <laughs> sorry. No, no, I love it. I'd go, I'm, Sorry, I've, I've already going, bought a ticket to this musical. Yeah, yeah, so. I'm in the front row right now. But Jared has the face of stone somehow, so you, it, the acting part must be hard, I think. Yeah. <laughs> now you, I understand, the, uh, you got this right, you're cataloging reasons to be cheerful under Trump. I could use some of those. <laughs> Honest to God, that's, I think that's a totally worthwhile you know, is, uh, undertaking. What, what, what this is be? quite serious. I mean, I, yeah, this is a serious endeavor that I'm doing. And, uh, well, for instance... There's a, uh, a mayor in a small town in Texas, a Republican mayor, who decided to have his little town uh, be entirely energy uh, sufficient, uh, energy or using all recycled stuff and all that. Uh, and he did it. And he looked, it's oil country, he's a Republican. Obviously, he was under pressure not to have sustainable energy, but he looked at the math and just said, this is what makes sense. This is cheaper, even this though is we're cheaper. in the country. This is cheaper. In the long run, this is cheaper. And I thought, that, to me, is really encouraging, that there are people who are breaking with... Uh, yeah. Breaking with party mm -hmm. politics, whether from the left or the right, Democrat, Republican, and kind of doing what actually makes sense. And I thought, that's, that's good news. Well, I know you don't... You're, you're not a fan of nostalgia. And uh, you don't like looking backwards. But I wanted to ask you something about uh, Talking Heads. Uh, this is about the Stop Making Sense tour. In 1984, was it in 84, 83, yeah, 84? Yeah, it was about, 83, yes, 84? Yeah, yeah. I was in college at the time, and I was an enormous fan. Um, and I had tickets to go see that tour up at UVA. I was at a college called Hampton Sydney College in Hampton Sydney, Virginia. And uh, I had a paper due the next day comparing um, the occult imagery in Marlowe's Tamburlaine the Great with the occult imagery in Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. And I was really, I had the tiger by the tail. I thought it was a pretty good thesis. And, uh, but I had to go see your show. I had to. I hear it was amazing. And so as we're driving out of the college, above the gates of the college, it says in Latin, it says, enter as boys, leave as men. And I said, stop the car, and I got out, and I, and I said, sell my ticket, I'm going to go write my paper, because I thought a boy would go to the concert, a man would go write his paper. And I've always wondered whether I made a mistake. <laughs> David Byrne, no pressure, but did I make the right choice? What, what did your friends say? Did they say... They said, you're the sum... They, he's, quote, 
No, you're the sum total of your experiences. This is an experience you need to have. You can go write your paper anytime. This is an experience you'll never have again. <laughs> well, they're right about that, but... Uh, <laughs> but, listen, uh, we're gonna do something later in the show where, I think, where I think you can turn to your friends and go, uh-huh, see? Could I? Yeah. I think you'll be able to go, see? What ha see what happened? I, I can't find I did the I right thing. I can't wait to be able to say that. <laughs> well, David, thank you so much for being here. I can't wait to rub it in their face. We'll be right back with a special performance by David Burns.